guys. Today, I'm going to give you some mobile design tips. Today I'm going to be talking about mobile design tips for 2020 and a lot of the stuff I've spoken about before in other videos on my YouTube channel and on uh, IGTV but even I haven't followed all of the advice that I give in favor of kind of what I wanted to do or was comfortable with. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is speed. It's now three seconds that you need your mobile app or website to load. Now I think websites are a little more forgiving because people understand that networks are slow. I think probably in first world countries, is it first world? You know, regardless where you are, people want their sites to load really quickly. So you need to stop doing certain things. And one of those things is adding these spinning loaders. People don't want to see that. People want a more progressive loading screen. Personally, on my site, it loads really fast. It's why I stripped out all images. It's why I don't have fancy sliders in the beginning of my site or anything like that. I purely have text. There's not any real graphics outside of SVG, which is essentially code. Then I'm pulling in certain files. And I've now even started stripping out a lot of the JavaScript that WordPress is bringing in. I'm working on making my homepage even faster by actually hard coding it and not utilizing WordPress for my index page. The reason for that is that I just want people to like pop on there and everything's there. And it's still not there. Three seconds isn't quick enough to load everything. I would encourage you to look at ways that you can make your landing page really fast, and even in your app. You should be doing this progressive thing. You know, those gray bars rather than have a spinner which goes around and there's no real reference to when you're going to see anything. Even if you add it in a percentage, people want to see something and you can start loading in elements of the page as you go. The second thing that's crucially important is to put the right mobile menu. So on my desktop version, I have a menu on the top right. And so what I did at the time, and please remember I coded my personal site back in 2014 originally. And at that time, the best menu was a hamburger menu where you clicked and it had this nice little slide down and it revealed the menu items. I've come to realize that firstly, I don't need that many menu items. I, I can actually have even fewer than I have right now. But the other thing is that people don't want to have to stretch, like stretch up to the top uh, right corner of the screen to click a menu to then click something. They don't want that. People want faster access. So the thing that I've done, I've removed the menu at the top of the screen in favor of putting a menu in the bottom that is easy and accessible for my thumb to just tap and navigate around. The next are a bunch of form tips that I think are crucially important because my biggest pet peeve is how people expect me to fill out forms on mobile, which I just simply don't have the patience for, and I, I never have a really good experience, and I end up just dropping off. I would encourage you to start making improvements in your forms, and the first thing that you should be doing is limit the number of form fields. Really only put form fields that are absolutely necessary. Don't put people through unnecessary steps that you could maybe get that information 
just a little bit later and not obstruct their mobile experience. A nice way to actually reduce the amount of information that people have to input is to join fields. So instead of having, if you do have name, surname, you could just have one field that just has your full name in there. There are ways to read that and be able to split the name in the database if need be. The next thing to make your life easier is to have the appropriate keyboard for the appropriate input field. When you set up an input field, you can always go and assign that that input field is text or a telephone number or numbers. Try and be intelligent about the amount of information and how that input that information is input and then appropriately put the right keyboard up there. Wherever possible, you should try and autofill forms so that it's just way easier for people. And browsers have become so much more secure and so much more useful that they can pull in a lot of information. And so can your uh, device that you're using. It's your device, you're using it. We generally don't give our phones to other people to do things. And even if they do, then it's a, a very rare case where they might want to change the details in the form. Geolocation also helps with this. By using geolocation, you can immediately assign the most relevant address, for example, in an app, which would really speed up the process of filling in where, where you're going from. Another handy tool is to use biometrics, which is available on most devices these days, which would speed up sign-in processes and just validate who you are during the payment process. Another handy tool is to use your camera and actually do card scanning. And uh, you know, I think we've all experienced where it doesn't work, but you know what, I've also mostly experienced where it does work. And I find that to be a very useful feature. One of the most off-putting reasons why people abandon forms is because they are long. So the best thing that you can do is chunk a form up, break it into bite-sized chunks and communicate effectively during that process to be able to capture the information you need and at least know where people dropped off so that you could encourage them to pick up where they left off. As I've spoken about menus earlier, the same applies for buttons and input fields. They need to be a size that these guys can touch and scan and push and, touch and not have to so delicately, so delicately try and tap. Something a lot of people seem to forget about is to use focus states so people know where they need to click next because when keyboards are moving up and down, it's very easy to lose focus. The other thing is to communicate effectively and tell people where they went wrong, what they need to do next and where they're at. And of course, there's no way you do anything without effective error messages that actually tell you something. They don't just go, whoops. I hope these mobile tips will help you in your designs and really just put out better products for people to use. My name's Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool.